Welcome back and welcome home, you lovely people. Welcome to Filmstruck Film Club. We're doing it again, where we watch a movie a week, sometimes a little longer if I'm messing up my schedule. But hey, we're here. It is I, Carson Higgins, with my good buddy Groot. We're watching a movie all the time. And this week we watched another awesome one, because that's what we do here. Uh, it's another film that, I, this tends to happen a lot, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look at films every week and be like, ooh, Maybe someday I'll pick that. This film, I've done that a hundred times. Just being like, should I pick that this week? And then I don't. But this week we did it, damn it. Uh, it was about time we revisited the beautiful island of Japan. And so I was like, let's go. We're gonna do it. We went to the 1960s. We whipped out a camera and we watched some badass, stylized, cool ass shit. We watched Seijin Su... How the fuck? Seijin Suzuki's Tokyo Drifter. It is very cool. Uh, this guy is a director that I definitely need to uh, spend some more time with. He has some other films that uh, maybe you've heard of, maybe you've seen Youth of the Beast, Branded to Kill. This guy makes like cool ass stylized Yakuza gangster movies in Japan. Uh, fun fact about Suzuki that I, I learned uh, from my research. Apparently the studio that he worked for uh, wasn't crazy about his style, thought he was a little too bizarre. Thought he made things that were like a little too surreal and, and perhaps incomprehensible. Uh, so they kept like lowering the budget with which they would let him make a film. And so they, they had like brought the budget way down and they were like, yeah, 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 go, go make Tokyo Drifter and don't fuck this one up. And uh, thinking that they would like sort of corral him into a creative space of making, I don't know, the movies they wanted him to make. He took it as a uh, as an opportunity to say, oh cool, I know what I'm gonna do. And he got his DP and his art director and they were like, we don't have a whole lot of money so we gotta make this look cool another way. And uh, so there's just some like really dope lighting elements and some really cool set pieces. Uh, the costumes are rad. I mean, our main guy in that like powder blue suit, Tetsu is just so cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like a pretty straightforward Yakuza story. You, you have our main guy, Tetsu the Phoenix, uh, and him and his old boss, who used to be like Yakuza gangsters, his boss disbanded their gang, and now they're trying to go legit. However, some other Yakuza boss is trying to recruit Tetsu, and he's like, no, 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 I gone legit, man. Me and this guy, we're trying to get out, so leave us alone. And of course, these other Yakuza guys ain't having that, so they hire Tatsu the Viper, to go assassinate my man Tetsu. Gotta say, as an American who doesn't speak any other languages, and I wish I did, it's not like I could just wish it. I, I, you know, I could take the time to learn a language, but I never did my whole life, so I struggle when I'm reading subtitles. And uh, I'm like, wait, Tetsu, Tatsu, who's who? So I got, I got a little confused, but then I, it got figured out. I, I will say, for my simple brain, the Phoenix, the Viper thing helped a lot, uh, but. Yeah, this, this movie just has such cool music in it. There's really like two songs that happen a lot. And then there's like this harmonica whistling business that takes place. Uh, but I mean, one of the coolest things in the movie is that uh, it kind of reminded me of Omar from The Wire. But Tetsu uh, comes up singing his own theme song on his way to go whoop some ass. And so they hear him singing the song and they're like, oh shit. And it's, it's kind of cool how they... Uh, how they let that happen. There's also a pretty dope part where he's just lying on the ground whistling that is towards the end. That is also pretty dope. Uh, I guess, so like, my part, part of what I was getting while watching the movie was that like, it was a little bit trying to make me laugh. Like, I was like, is, it, is this a comedy? And it's not like a comedy, but they are like parodying certain archetypes. Like the Yakuza tough guy kind of gets made to be uh, a bit brutish and, and maybe dim. Uh, we, we also just, I read this, so I'm not coming up with this, but there's this awesome, like, black and white opening scene, and then it's rather colorful, uh, and I guess that was somehow illustrating this, like, post-1964 Tokyo Olympics that took place. There's a really cool movie by Koni Chikawa. It's the Tokyo Olympiad, it's in the Criterion Collection, and it's incredible footage of the, of the Tokyo Olympics from 1964, which was... Let's face it, a pretty incredible uh, a period of time for Japan. It was kind of their big coming out party post-World War II where they're like, we're sorry, we're cool, we're modern, we're hip. 
Check us out. Uh, so that that's something to be said. Uh, another thing that I really appreciated while watching this movie was how often they refer to each other as bro. There's so many times where they're just like, bro, what are you doing? Bro, are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, this is tight. Uh, also, I mean, just like un unabashedly Tarantino just stole everything he could from this movie and probably some of other Suzuki's movies that I haven't watched. But uh, just the way that the musical elements take place in this film, the like black and white at the beginning to color is very Kill Bill. But also like there's this big saloon fight that was kind of reminiscent of Kill Bill and also reminiscent of like Mel Brooks. It felt kind of blazing saddles. I mean, they're even like in a saloon and like everyone's whooping everyone's ass. And there's even that moment at like the end of the fight where those, I don't know who they were, but they like push in like 40 guys out the door and you're like, yeah, sure, that's fine. But it's like, there's, there are these like kind of spoofish parody elements to this film that, that kind of lighten it up and, and really make it a, a quite, quite the ride. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't even have a whole lot else to say other than like, I just thought it was really cool. Like what, what a great use of uh, budgetary uh, restraints, right? Uh, constraints, I don't know. Uh, but there, there's something cool that it's like, this is the movie you made when they gave you like practically no money. Um, and it is just like super cool and hip. It is one of those things that like it's been borrowed from so many times that visiting it now, uh, it like feels derivative, but everything that makes it feel that way is what's derivating from this. I clearly need to go back to college and take an English class. But uh, you, you, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, okay. Um, Great movie, you guys. I'm glad we watched this. Uh, keep in touch, man. Follow us at Filmstruck Film Club. Let me know what you thought of this film. Check out some of our other films that we've watched in the past if you want to go down memory lane and, and kind of check out what we've been checking out. And then just be, you know, keep your eyes peeled because we'll have new picks all the time. So we'll have a new pick tomorrow. Keep your eyes out for that. Groot, anything else to say? I am Groot. What a guy. Love y'all. Catch you later.